This is Jerry Hesch of the Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And um, this is the end of uh, three treatment visits that were two hours each. Um, Mary and her husband drove up from Arizona. And um, she has a diagnosis of EDS, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Hypermobility Syndrome. And I want to counteract a mythology. And people tend to believe that if they have hypermobility syndrome and then they injure their SI joint, that it then becomes further hypermobile, becomes unstable, and that they then need a fusion. And in this example, it's not true. She did have SIJD. Um, she had a positive response to an SI injection with definitive pain relief for how long? Uh, oh, over eight hours for the diagnostic injection. Yeah. Over four days for the lat bilateral lateral branch block. Okay, okay. Fabulously yeah. numb, yeah. So yeah. the injections helped relieve your pain, but there's this belief that if the injection uh, in the SI joint relieves pain, then that's the source of the pain, and then you need to get it fused. And that's a little bit of a mythology because you had a, a mechanical dysfunction that we treated. And it's a pattern that's not well understood in the community. There's very little in the literature on what's called downslip ilium. And that's the pattern that you presented. And we treated it and it has stayed corrected for three days. You knew intuitively that there was something off with your pelvis and you kept trying to uh, you would push on the back of your pelvis and it would relieve your pain, but it just wouldn't last any longer than you pushing. So I'll shut up now and I'll let you tell your story. Um, yes, I have been going through since uh, 10 years ago when I had my son, when I was pregnant, right before um, I had him, I had a traumatic fall. Um, my left knee dislocated. I was walking backwards holding a, my dresser with my mom. It's a terrible idea. I got distracted, looking a different way, probably stepped with it strange and it dislocated. I fell to the right side of my body in some rocks and in fall, not really a decision of my own, like a mother instinct decision was how shall I fall? What's the best way to fall? So I really just twisted as much as I could to land with my arm protecting my belly and to make my butt in this back area the place to take the, the hit, not my stomach. And I believe that's when I had this problem happen. Um, it went into um, having to be induced due to high blood pressure, hypertension, um, preeclampsia, I guess. That's what they called it or something. So I was induced. Um, I did have a difficult delivery <clears throat> because I got a, a, a CSF spinal fluid leak um, due to getting an epidural. I guess having EDS, it, it is a high risk that you can have a CSF leak if you get an epidural, which I didn't know. Obviously, at the time, I've just, within this last couple of weeks, been diagnosed hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, so I, I wasn't aware of that. But anyway, had a difficult delivery, but after delivery, lower back um, ligaments and everything, this was all very weak, very, very weak. And um, I had the numbness and some tingles and pain down the right leg. Um, they did an MRI and found my L5-S1 um, was, had an injury, uh, but, and so I started being treated by a pain center after that. Um, the pain center went on for years, uh, back um, injury increased, or, or the back pain increased, and the pain center uh, eventually was diagnosing me with sacroiliitis or SI joint dysfunction, both sides, and then this L5-S1 issue. Within a couple years, of my son being born, I was bending over to lift something heavy to help my mom and move, and I couldn't come all the way up. I was stuck. Um, and from there, my back pains and my back problems got worse, shocking down the left side, um, had to sit on the floor, just really painful stuff. And that eventually turned into six years ago, a uh, back surgery, L5S1 was fused. Um, that helped me, that spot that I couldn't touch uh, was gone, the shocking was gone, um, but a very long recovery, about a year and a half on a heating pad, couldn't sit um, still very much or stand very much, um, a lot of SI joint pain still, and then um, within a couple years of that back surgery I'm starting to notice a lot more limping and a lot more pain on the right side. Um, uh, which eventually led me back into therapy. 
and eventually got so bad I couldn't walk. I couldn't keep my legs straight. It was op opening to the side that I was kind of tilting um, and feeling kind of stuck. And uh, we eventually got from doctor to doctor to doctor to realize that I, they found an imaging a right hip labral tear and ligament tear is um, tear. And so uh, with hip injections reducing the pain 50%, SI joint um, injection, reducing the pain 50%. It was kind of determined, hey, let's go through with the right hip orthoscopy surgery. Um, and that did help. And I was able to walk again and put the leg straight again and some things. But still pain uh, behind here, you know, still pain in walking, in right at the end of extending my leg, you know, pain, pain. Still on the ice pack all the time. Still on the heating pad for my SI joints all the time. Longer recovery again. Um, every time I'm going back to the doctor saying, ah, now the left hip's hurting. Now I'm feeling the pubic symphysis kind of shift. Uh, or my gut's going to fall out. Um, I'm feeling shocking pain there. That's new. Um, so new pain's beginning to increase. And then this is, again, within these last three years. Um, it's not even been the three-year mark from my right hip arthroscopy. It's February 15th um, would be the three-year anniversary. Anyhow, um, <coughs> getting worse, worse, worse. Doctor uh, saying, uh, probably recovery pain, you're still, you know, it's your hypermobility and such. And then um, now brings us to September, back in front of the doctors, hey, uh, so something is wrong. Imaging, showing both uh, hips, re-injured uh, the labrum in the same area. Um, this side, same thing, labra, labral tear, uh, ligamentaris tear and um, some tendon and muscle tearing. And, um, and, then, uh, and, then I'm, and my, of course, concern was, well, maybe the SI joint, this instability, this torque, this twist in my pelvis is the reason I'm impinging. Because if I, if I can't, if my body walks forward and I'm stuck like this, then I'm gonna obviously automatically impinge myself and damage myself, which is, was kind of my guess is what's happening. And um, anyway, I just felt, as the days and weeks were going by, getting more and more of these testing done, I was just getting worse, and my pelvis felt as if it was becoming completely destabilized. Um, more swelling in the pubic symphysis, having to grab my pants and kind of pull it forward to make it kind of go back, um, pulling my pants together to hold my hips together. Um, they're diagnosing me with hypermobile EDS. Does that mean I'm coming apart in all my joints? Uh, they're all unstable, is this my life? support groups online, it sounds like, you know, uh, th this is going to be bad, but in my mind, I know when I take the top of my right hip bone and push it forward, my hip pain goes away. You know, my, my uh, hips would open up like almost like airflow, oxygen, blood flow, take away my hip pain. And, uh, and I thought, well, what makes this stay forward? And, uh, you know, right SI joint fusion? I guess that's what I, I am going to need. And um, so I, I was seeing my hip specialist. I told him, well, my, my worry is you do arthroscopy again, and I'm right back here uh, because of this hobble-wobble SI joints, you know, making this a problem. And uh, so he sent me over to a spine surgeon who deals with SI joint fusions. We began to see him. He wanted recent uh, new SI joint diagnostic injections, got those. Those were both uh, great, temporary, but great. Um, then he wanted to do a bilateral, lateral branch block, numbing like, I guess, five nerves on each side, so like 10 nerves. Um, these, uh, these procedures are very painful for me. I don't uh, feel ever numb, probably due to the EDS with injections or dental or whatever. I, the lidocaine stuff doesn't work. So these are very traumatic for me to receive and painful. Anyhow, um, but you know, again, great response. And so the next step is radiofrequency ablate nerve ablation. Kind of questioned that um, because you're going to be burning nerves that may or may not grow back. Again, a band aid, temporary, kicking the can down the road a little bit to the right. Maybe some people have had that ability to kind of toy with. I did not. Um, my pain has been so severe, showering every three, four days, bedridden, wheelchair walker, cane. <coughs> My mom, who's actually disabled, I'm not in disability, living with us to help care for uh, my pets, my home, my children, and to help support my husband who's in the military, who has to work to uh, keep our family afloat. Um, 
desperation increasing, depression, anxiety increasing, research, research, research. Uh, cognitively, because of the stress of the pain and the situation, not being able to retain thought, short-term memory, maybe it's EDS brain fog that I'm reading. I don't know what's happening to me. Can't remember what somebody's saying not that long ago. Overwhelmed. Um, telling my husband I have uh, hit my limit with trying to problem solve because as far as I'm reaching, um, I don't seem to have be going anywhere. I can't um, seem to get a doctor to watch me walk, uh, feel what I'm saying with the pelvis torquing and how much torque it would take to keep it forward and uh, eventually it would just rock back kind of a feeling. I couldn't get um, anyone to understand my pelvis dysfunction. So um, I guess the next steps were basically my uh, appointments next week were with the trauma uh, surgeon that um, was kind of a secondary opinion that would be capable of fusing my SI joints, both of them, replacing my, uh, you know, hip replacements, because uh, the hip arthroscopy doctor said, with your hypermobility, you'll probably be back here in two years with a hip arthroscopy. So it was like, why even do that? So he would have been able to replace my hips, uh, or re hip replacements, put a metal bar in my pubic symphysis to stabilize that, and um, stabilize my pelvis through SI joint fusion. Um, that is a doctor appointment I had set for next week. Uh, doctor, my spine doctor, I had set for next week to say, hey, I'm kind of questioning radio frequency. Let's get to, I, I can't go through more testing. I can't be put on a table anymore. I'm going downhill fast. I need this very right SI joint at the very least fused for stability. Um, and I was ready to have that kind of conversation. And then also uh, with my primary care and then, um, and then the hip arthroscopy guy, just to doctor, just to you know, kind of run everything new about EDS diagnosis and some different things through him. Anyway, I've now canceled all of those appointments. But um, anyhow, so what happened um, just Saturday, a week ago, was that I was up early in the morning. Um, my husband was up early for work, and like always, researching things in bed. And in the uh, sacroiliac support group that I follow on Facebook, I had seen it come across a few times, hash method, hash method, H-E-S-C-H, hash method, whatever that is. And uh, I decided to Google it, look it up, started reading through uh, some things. And uh, the more and more I read, the more and more resonated with me because I finally realized there was a doctor speaking the language I was so desperately needing someone to speak. Someone in um, an expertise field who understands pelvis dysfunction and, um, and then surprisingly uh, his methods and, and his ways were gentle and, and not going to be um, forceful and they were not going to be long term and they were going to be uh, you know, helpful. So it started getting my, you know, juices flowing. I didn't even know very much, actually, um, by the time I, I called him. I went outside, I was talking to my mom, and all of a sudden I decided, ah, I just want to call and see how far out he is. Somebody that is this great must be out months. Um, so I didn't want to give myself hope. So I uh, simply called him and I said, only open Monday through Friday. I didn't even know uh, Dr. Hesh worked by himself or out of his home. Um, clinic uh, type thing or anything. I just figured it'd be like all the other doctor processes and I would talk to an uh, assistant and I, anyway, um, he answered the phone and I was speechless. Um, <laughs> I was very emotional. I couldn't speak and uh, I, I, I just, that kind of godly feeling in me of um, that intuition, that gut feeling was just so prevalent and uh, I just knew he could help me already. So um, I just simply asked him about how long it would be till I could get in. He uh, let me know he was available. I came in, I couldn't speak to my mom or my son for quite a while because I was weeping because there was hope and I just knew there was hope. Uh, so I eventually said, he answered the phone. And they're like, who? Uh, did someone die? Uh, but yeah, I said, yeah. And so I ended up telling her about it, told my husband about it. And by the next day, um, we had received uh, a refund that we hadn't expected in quite a while. Um, and did more and more research. It all set, sounded good. And then uh, I had asked my husband and Dr. Hesh 
um, once I had made the decision, I have to see this doctor before I go forward in, in uh, surgery. I, I, if that's the truth, then I, the sooner the better. And my dad's going through some very serious medical things uh, this upcoming week, so I knew I would not be comfortable leaving state during that time frame. Um, so this week was kind of like, hey, there's no way that my husband or the doctor will probably have availability to make this happen, but my grandma, like she said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I decided to ask, and, and surprisingly, my husband was able to get time off work, and Dr. Hesh was able to see me, and so we got here. I met Dr. Hesh for the first time only two days ago, um, Thursday, uh, and uh, my whole life has changed. I'm completely different. Um, I'm sure my dad and everybody thought it sounded like voodoo or impossible, uh, but this man has studied these different dysfunctions and a gentle method of counteracting that through a little bit of oppositional force that you can't even feel, and uh, yet you get up off the table changed, so <laughs> I'm glad it's all videotaped so there's proof because it's um, amazing. You were, you were walking, it was obvious you had pain, you were walking slowly, and it was obvious that you didn't like put, putting weight on the right foot. Foot. Yeah, a waddle. Uh, I mean, a waddle and a cane in my left hand, the opposite uh, side of my big problem area. It's the only thing that I could really walk with. Uh, but any long walking, my husband would yeah, push me in a wheelchair. And how do you feel walking now? Like I'm learning to walk again for the first time. Like I got my legs back and my body back and my center of gravity back. And do you feel like you know how to self manage this? Uh, yeah, you've had my husband videotape how to help my, help me in case it does go back, but you know you don't even feel that, that it will. It probably took traumatic force to make it stuck downward, and it sounds like you know gently you've had that corrected, <laughs> and my body's responding in a really amazing, like mind blowing way, and I have a lot of confidence that it'll just keep healing. So, you know, I think, you know, if your right SI joint was unstable, you wouldn't be able to walk the way you do. You walk normally now. Yeah. And if no it was hypermobile, that wouldn't be the case. Yeah. It's so I don't think you need an SI fusion and I don't think you think so. And I don't think your husband thinks so either. The first day that Dr. Hush treated me um, with my downslip of my right ilium, um, and I left, I had an incredible amount of right-sided new sensations. Uh, my, uh, almost like my guts or my intestines, my uh, inside my abdomen had room to kind of come over and like we're stretching out. Um, up here, I remember feeling that and um, the right part of my face, like even though it never felt scrunched up, I kept feeling the sensation as if it was scrunched up and as if it was kind of coming down. And um, where I couldn't turn this way before because I was stuck this way, I can turn and, you know, uh, trying to walk normal. You know, I'm used to my shoulders being stuck this way. So now that it doesn't have to, it almost as if it turned on this muscle for the first time, like in forever. So my body's just really coming around. I can feel my right foot hit the ground. I can feel my right leg. Um, it's just amazing. It really is. And then yesterday uh, he discovered I still had a little bit of a downslip um, in an oblique direction of my ileum. So down, and it was also down kind of at an angle. So he, he, he knew how to counteract that, and he did. And it, both exercises, um, the one where my leg was this way and he just gently pushed into my uh, foot, I never felt like anything was happening. And same thing yesterday when he counteracted this oblique. Uh, slip. He just had my leg when I was on my stomach up and kind of over and, and I still didn't feel any pain or like a, any changes were happening and yet I get up and I can walk and use motion all the way through my right leg like I haven't been able to do in a very, very long time. It, it, it's almost like these uh, muscles um, are like waking up and being used for the first time. It's yeah, amazing. very, very interesting response. No pubic symphysis and stability at all. That was the first day that he had worked on me that uh, I realized, uh, you know, leaning over in bed or to get up or to scooch in any position, I would have to grab it to kind of make sure uh, stabilize. There's none of those feelings of instability. I had deep pain where that butt bone is kind of in there. None of that pain. That all went away um, immediately and uh, no knee 
need to, yeah, stabilize my hips, no need to push this forward for some relief. It's amazing. Better well, you know, um, there's not much information on downslip. I have a fair number of YouTube videos on downslip ilium and only a couple on oblique downslip. Um, so there is a source of information there. And when I teach my workshops or in my book, I cover downslip ilium as well. Um, and when I first evaluated you, I showed you that the upper cervical had a right rotation fixation of the atlas, the first Whatever cervical vertebrae. <laughs> okay. And then once we balanced your pelvis, once we, we restored normal mobility, normal stability in the pelvic joint, in the SI joint, re removing the downslip, then that pattern in the upper cervical released on it automatically. It was a reflex release. Mm. Uh, there was no need for that to rotate anymore mm. in response to the twist in your pelvis. That was the neck thing you tried Yeah, to yeah. So that might explain some of the symptoms you feel in your head and neck, but all of them, you know, it's eight, an atypical response, so very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then same thing today with my shoulders, kind of whatever you did here in the top part of my... And then I was able to have that be released and walk normally. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's important to evaluate the whole body. When someone has a focus of pain... You know, you thought it was your SI joint, and it was, but it also was a few other issues. And so a top-to-bottom evaluation is very, very important. I went from thinking something so awful was going to take something so huge, like literally surgery on five joints to stabilize my pelvis, and it's just absolutely incredible. <laughs> nice. Well, I thought I'd have your husband make a few comments about, Sure. you know. And just to say one more thing. The hip uh, joint pain, the SI joint pain, the pubic symphysis pain, gone. <laughs> the stuck, my body was telling me when it went forward, all my pain disappeared. That was my body truly telling me if something can make this go up and forward, everything will feel better. And you made it go up and basically forward. <laughs> and here we are. Nice. Restored, health restored. It's amazing. <laughs> Very good. I'm delighted. So, Victor, your thoughts? Uh, a couple different thoughts. One, getting to here has been a frustrating process. Obviously, there's problems with the uh, Western medical system, with insurance, and with troubleshooting and diagnostics. Looking at the full picture, like you said, versus the compartmentalizing, uh, which uh, I'm a little jaded on with some of our experiences. We've been through, through this for about a decade now, and we're, we're seeking out the best, the best of the best. Um, and some of it's uh, we're paying out of pocket for or whatever it takes to find out what's wrong and how we can fix it. Um, and we've run into a lot of problems with uh, basically communication uh, and uh, understanding what the total problem was. Uh, when you love somebody, you'll do whatever you can for them. Uh, you just want to see them better. It's a very simple thing to say, especially with a complex issue. When she presented the idea about coming to see you, uh, it seemed arcane, it really did. Um, Sorry, no, what did you say? It seemed arcane. Uh, what does that mean? Ar archaic. Archaic? Yeah. So. How so? Because it was non-traditional. Oh, because my approach is non-traditional, no, it seemed. Not necessarily that, just you want to go to Colorado and do what? And what's outside of Arizona? Um, what, what other things have we not looked at here? Let me take a look at this. And you did go to Mayo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I are. was telling him, I just need someone who understands the, my biomechanics, the kinetic chain. I've had all these compensation patterns. This guy speak in my language. So yeah. with, with that, that being said, took a look at it, looked at uh, the research behind it, what you were presenting on your website, uh, what you're presenting on YouTube, kind of did a little bit of fundamental research behind it. and. Uh, definitely an approach that we have not explored yet. So um, I was definitely willing to to uh, go forth and, and give it a try. Um, once we once we got here and you started uh, speaking with her, um, it was only a handful of times, or less than that, where we've actually spoken to a professional who one allows us to articulate our story all the way through. 
or read all my medical records and history to, to take a look at the at the history and look at the validated data and proof, and then three, be able to do a full-on assessment um, with that information in mind, whether or not it's uh, used or excluded, it's actually considered. That is something that's different than than what we've experienced thus far. Um, she had an immediate po positive response. Um, throughout the night after her treatment. Um, and I was there the whole way, to be quite honest. Um, uh, gut on the inside was ready to stop this. Uh, what if I had noticed any type of issues or whatever, just the protective nature of it. You know, I was not in really such honest. vulnerable shape that mm -hmm. very, very, we were very worried, vulnerable. yeah, that something I can barely could even, me more. I can barely even massage her without inducing uh, extreme pain. And just getting out here logistically was, was pretty rough. It wasn't, uh, we couldn't use I had to lay on a air mattress in the back of our Explorer all yep. the way here without a seatbelt on in yep. order to even make it here. Yep. How long did it take me to reduce that downslip, to correct it? Oh, um, the first treatment, five minutes. Correct, and the correct, five minutes. And the second treatment was how long? Two minutes for the oblique downslip. Yeah. Now, in treatment time, in, in terms of applying a force to a person's body, five minutes is a long time. Most people will, will do a quick thrust or, or, you know, impart a small force for a short period of time to mobilize a joint. But slow, constant force for five minutes. And I had to find the correct angle mm -hmm. in which I could get vertical mobility through the ilium. But five minutes is, seems to be the magic. But I didn't feel any changes happening in my body during, during the, the treatment. Time. You weren't and aware. I didn't think you were done. I did. I thought this must be the first like exercise of treatment. I wasn't sure. And you had me sit up and uh, st and go to walk, which it took me quite a while, just because I felt so dizzying and my eyesight was blurry and everything was. Just which sounds a little negative, but actually you gave it a positive spin, in which it felt like your body was recalibrating. Yes. Yes. That's exactly how. Very it good. Happened. Well, just to reiterate, one important concept is we have a person who has been gone through the genetic testing, diagnosis Ehlers Danlos Syndrome, EDS, hypermobility syndrome, and we showed that on the earlier videos. You definitely have hypermobility throughout your joints. Uh, who had an SI joint injury, who had a positive, definite pain relief for eight hours with an SI joint injection, and the next step that they were proposing based on that was to fuse your SI joint. And I'm here to say you don't need an SI fusion. Um, that we were able to, to restore normal position and mobility uh, in your SI joint. You no longer have a downslip. Um, you're able to keep it with what I taught you, and you do not need a fusion. And coming out here, the thought process was at a minimum, even if I'm not comfortable to let you adjust me, or you don't think I, I could be adjusted because you don't treat unless you know there's a problem. Um, that you, you know, and stuff that you can identify. My thought process was at the very least, because he speaks my language, he can gently assess me and at least be able to say what my dysfunction is so that prior to going into surgery, they would at least know what's wrong with me. It still made me feel more, like it was very important to feel validated with what is exactly wrong with me before you go in and infusing me. And the other thought process was if he does adjust me, even if I still need surgery, at least I'll be in more in an anatomically correct position to be fused in because that was the other fear, okay, but I'm stuck, and they don't know why I'm stuck, and what if they fuse me in a stuck position, then I'm really screwed, <laughs> is how it felt, so now it's just, those were like, just in case, but I, I, I could, I didn't know if I could truly believe that it could totally restore something so horrendous, and the only way to <laughs> give that information would be to have like, witnesses of my family be able to tell you how terrible my life has been for so long this is insane i know i'm i'm like in a dream world or something but uh i, I know i'm going to keep healing and resting and my my muscles are going to keep figuring out how to work uh, properly again and and uh, i just wish that there was more than just thank you that i could say and i also wish that your methods and your ideas and your intuition of what has allowed you to become so knowledgeable on this i just pray to god that it will spread like wildfire and physical therapists physicians everywhere 
we'll stop and pay attention because we're, we're making things way more